Hey guys, it's me, 50, and welcome to 50's Thoughts, the show where I talk about my thoughts and opinions and things that matter to me. Uh, today we will be talking about the Daredevil show that just came out on Netflix, and um, make sure you leave a like if you liked it, a sympathy like if you didn't, uh, make sure you add it to your favorites if it's truly worthy of it, and make sure you share it with your friends, that way we can kind of keep the conversation going, and yeah, so let's just kind of jump right into it. So what you gotta remember before you jump into the show is that Ben Affleck did a Daredevil film back in like 2003. The film was terrible, and I mean very, very bad. Um, it it was a sin almost to what Daredevil actually was because they they didn't really think about the comics at all or you know how to tell Daredevil's story. They just thought about how to get as many successful um, traits from the comic book movies at that time into the film and hopefully uh when they use those tricks again people will kind of you know jump towards it and go oh man daredevil's the new best thing and that's really not what happened they tried to take from batman and spider-man and uh blade which were very successful at the time and um you know they just tried to make a clone of all three of them and just kind of co you know combine them together uh to create kind of this bastard child of the you know, comic world, which, you know, there were some cool things in it, like, you know, some of the fight scenes were kind of cool, but the the story just didn't have anything there, and it, it was just poorly written, uh, and even some of it was, like, poorly acted, too. So, when you figure out that there's a Netflix show coming out that's about Daredevil, you're like, okay, this is gonna be total redemption for Daredevil. You know, uh, I think I put in the thumbnail of the video, um, all all of Daredevil's sins will be forgiven in the show. And that's what pretty much happened, right? You have 13 episodes, each of them are about an hour long, um, and it tells the story about um, Wilson Fisk, you know, and Matt Murdock, and kind of how they're all just starting off, you know. So it kind of tells, like, a little bit of an origin story at the beginning, uh, they don't, like, go too in-depth with it. Um, you know, they just kind of show the accident and things like that. Um, and then, you know, they kind of jump right into what's happening now. Uh, the first episode is kind of like how they meet Karen Page. Um, and then the second one, which I gotta say, the second one has amazing fight scenes. Um, you know, you kind of see his medic for the first time. Um, and just throughout the whole season it's focused on just Matt Murdock taking down um, Wilson Fisk and it, it's very well written it it's it does like the thing with Arrow uh, and maybe Flash I haven't seen Flash yet to see if they're doing this but I, I assume so since they're kind of created by you know the same network um, Arrow is how do I want to put it it's sometimes not really focused Right? Sometimes you'll have, a, like, an episode or two where it doesn't have anything to do with the main story. It's just a little side quest or something like that. Um, and Daredevil, that's not the case. Right? Daredevil, it's all focused on taking Fisk down, which I like. And, you know, it's... Sure, it's only 13 episodes, but it, you feel a lot within those 13 episodes. You learn a lot about the characters, you know. You learn pretty much everything about Matt Murdock. You know, you kind of learn about Foggy and Murdoch's relationship. Um, or I shouldn't say relationship, I should say friendship. Um, and then you kind of learn, you know, a little bit about Paige's past. Uh, you learn about, you know, definitely Wilson Fisk's p past, which is really dark and very, very uh, cool take on the character, I thought. And then you kind of learn about, you know, just some of the other people that are within the series, even though... It's not like, oh, everyone has a backstory, you know? Some of them have smaller backstories, but when a character as big as Wilson Fisk or, you know, um, Stick or any of those other characters that, you know, really need some light shined on them, you know, they give them that right, you know, they give them that, that light that they deserve, um... And that's what I truly loved about the series is just they had the time, unlike the Daredevil film, to kind of go in depth with the backgrounds and, you know, make you really feel for these characters and make you really learn about these characters. 
and uh, the story is just perfectly well written. Like I said, it's just I I want there to be a season two because I I've binged through all these episodes and I really wish that I just kind of took my time to um, really just spread out the se series because now. I have no Daredevil to watch. I really wanted to watch more Daredevil uh, now that the show's over. Um, and also, too, like, uh, d the fight scenes just are amazing. Some of them were done in one shot, and it's just amazing how, how you know, they're just kind of animalistic, and they're kind of devilish uh, in a way, uh, just how he fights and all the acrobatics and uh, things like that. It's just so amazing. And it, when you know that Matt Murdock is blind it makes it even more amazing when he does these crazy flips and tricks and um, all these cool karate moves or I'm not sure if they're karate but you know what I mean all these different fighting moves uh, that you know are different than his father's fighting moves since his father was a boxer and um, Daredevil's just a freaking acrobat uh, blind acrobat who happens to know how to fight and that's just what I really liked about all those fight scenes um, when you look at like the costume that they put on the box it's kind of misleading because that costume doesn't show up until the last episode of the series called Daredevil so once you get to episode 13 Daredevil that's when you see the Daredevil suit besides that you see kind of the black t-shirt you know, maybe the black armorish gloves, the boots, the kind of combat pants, and then the, uh, the, I don't know what, what you would call it, the mask that kind of covers his whole face. That's th throughout the, like, first 12 episodes. But they really do have a nice balance of, you know, put, putting as much Matt Murdock in there as Daredevil. So it kind of balances out, and, you know, you kind of feel like they're the same person because they are but you know you, you kind of just forget sometimes that you know this animalistic creature is you know Matt Murdock who's really kind of peaceful and you know just a genuinely nice person and you know that that's something that I thought was really cool in the series and uh, I also thought that it was really cool how they were kind of just setting things up um, for you know more more stuff right uh i think red was talking to me about it um and i forget what he said it was but there was this red ninja in the series and he was like you know what i think that's where they're going next like the the i want to say red hand i'm not sure but um he's like yeah that's that's definitely where they're going next where i was thinking well maybe this series was only meant for one season you know they ended it um, very nicely, and it just, it, I don't really think it set itself up for a sequel, because maybe they were just treading the waters with this, and I really do think that, you know, they tread in the right waters this time, they treaded in holy water, came out and became this badass show that everyone, everyone wants more of, and, you know, that, I really do want more of the show, it's just that good, um, you know, Hopefully, like, in Season 2, maybe we'll see a little bit more episodes. Um, you know, I'm fine if it's 13 episodes again. It's just <laughs> Season 3 better come out pretty soon. Um, if that's going to be the case for Season 2. Um, but, you know, I hope that we get to see kind of the more Daredevil villains that, you know, are worth seeing, you know. Uh, and hopefully we'll see, like, Elektra and Bullseye get kind of their own redemption, too. Uh, because the film that Ben Affleck was in really didn't give them any leeway. Uh, it just, it kind of tore them to the ground for, you know, comic book fans. And it's like, oh, come on. Bullseye's kind of cool and Electra's kind of cool. Why do you have to make it so no one would ever want to pick up their comic or, or um, even consider them as one of the coolest um, superheroes and villains ever? Um but I hope that they kind of go in depth, you know, with that, and maybe some of the later seasons, if they're going to do that. Um, you know, I, I really liked how it was kind of like a crime syndicate story. You know, you had uh, Wilson Fisk at the top, and then you had, um, I think it was Gao who was the Chinese woman. 
And then you had the Japanese ninja, which I was talking about before. Then you have kind of the um, investor um, type who kind of... I, I don't know if he's an investor, but he kind of moves the stocks around for uh, Wilson Fisk. Or moves the mo cash around for Wilson Fisk, you know. And you kind of just see one by one. And <laughs> sorry that I'm spoiling this a little bit. You know, uh, oh, and the Russians too. Um, can't have a series without evil Russians. But one by one, you kind of get them, see them offed. Whether, <laughs> okay, this is going to be a spoiler. Sometimes it's Fisk and sometimes it's uh, Daredevil. Even though Daredevil doesn't really kill them. You know, he does put them out of business, but sometimes Wilson Fisk actually ends up killing them. Um, so, you know, you can't grow too attached to some of these villains because, you know, they do get killed off. But at least when they do get killed off, you know, it's in a gruesome fashion that really fits within the Daredevil world. You know, I think another thing that, you know, Ben Affleck's Daredevil did wrong was it was rated PG-13. Dude, Daredevil's dark. Daredevil... I, I think it's darker than Batman. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's between that Daredevil and Watchmen range when it comes to dark. And I feel like they were able to do that perfectly well in this TV series. And I'm glad that they did it that way, you know, to kind of have that dark hero. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are saying that this is what Arrow wanted to be. And that's not the case. Arrow wanted to be its own thing. And Daredevil totally is its own thing. You know, they just had different approaches of how they wanted to do their characters and things like that. And, you know, I, I truly believe that Arrow is kind of its own show. Sure, it takes a lot from Batman, and I think a lot of things do nowadays. They kind of just take from this dark and gritty Batman, you know, whether it's the Dark Knight or whether it's, you know, uh, you know, whether it's the classic Burden films or uh, even the new Ben Affleck one. Uh, I feel like we're going to get some influences from that, too. Uh, when it finally comes out and things like that. Um, but I do think that, you know, Daredevil does stand out on its own, you know, as a dark hero. It's not a Batman clone. It's definitely something that it, it's own, you know. He's struggling to with the things that he's kind of doing, and he's going to confessions and saying, look, I have totally sinned here, but I can't stop. You know, it, I have to keep going if I want to protect my city. And... Yo, know, I think only two people ever know that he's the Daredevil throughout the whole series. Um, which, I, I won't try to spoil it, but one is the priest, and then someone else that's kind of close to him um, kind of figures it out, too. And it's just... I, I like that about this show, where, like, some other shows, it's like they figure out who he is every other episode, um, which is kind of saddening. But, you know, I, I really like how they were able to keep the secret and the mystery in the Daredevil in this show, um, and I, back to kind of like the, you know, it's its own dark thing, it does take influences from other things, like I said, it take, took influence from Batman, but, uh, kind of the combat style feels like, uh, um, a really acrobatic Spider-Man, or kind of like a Nightwing-ish type character, um, and then, uh, it kind of has, like, whenever he's leaving a fight, it always reminds me of Arrow, or, however, he kind of, like, moves around, um, you know, as the Daredevil, um, just normally, it kind of feels like Arrow a bit, um, but it still stands out on its own, and, you know, when you combine these three together, it really made a perfect Daredevil, um, that, you know, sure, they tweaked some things, and, uh, from, you know, the formulas of those shows to kind of, you know, they're kind of similarities more than, you know, oh, they just copied and pasted, which I feel like that's what Daredevil needed to be. They, they're they similarities, but they're not an exact clone of it, which the Daredevil film tried to do and made it so forgettable um, and made it fall off the face of the earth. That way people would never, ever watch it again. And yeah, this, this show is just perfectly done, you know, and there really isn't much I would change about it. Um, you know, you really feel for some of these characters. I think uh, the Guardians of, Gal Guardians of the Galaxy director said that, you know, he cried twice during the series, and even though I didn't cry twice, um, there were scenes where I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. W really? You did... Oh my god. And, you know, you kind of get those types of feelings throughout the series. Uh, whether it's, you know, Fisk, you know, doing damage, or whether it's, you know, 
just kind of, well, it's mainly Fisk doing damage. Um, whether it's to his own people, though, or to his, um, to the, his people of, you know, Hell's Kitchen, you really do feel for some of those characters. Maybe not for the bad guys, because, well, they're bad guys, but when, you know, the innocent kind of get harmed and, and things like that you're like oh my god uh where like something like arrow i don't really think would do that quite well in batman uh i don't think if they did like a batman tv show uh it would feel that way but uh, definitely like in a film there's probably a way that you could make that feeling happen there but you know daredevil is just it's it's amazing it makes me want to know more about daredevil and uh, it makes me want to do more with Daredevil, you know, I kind of want to see a season two of Daredevil, I, I, <laughs> I honestly want to play a Daredevil video game, the only thing that, you know, is a Daredevil video game is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1, if you're playing just as Daredevil running around, <laughs> but I really wish that there was, like, a Daredevil game or something that I could just immerse myself into because Daredevil is one of those lesser known heroes and I'm glad that he got his own show and got into the light um, because it's what he needed you know after the 2003 Daredevil no one really wanted to see Daredevil on on screen again and I'm glad that they put him on the screen again because he is a really cool hero and I'm glad that Netflix picked him up I'm glad that uh, they dusted him off and you know threw him back into the ring and you know gave him this epic win um and i hope that they do that with some of the other characters too that you know maybe marvel in the past has kind of ruined i'm not saying howard the duck but i'm saying you know maybe like i think punisher didn't do as well as they wanted to so maybe a punisher tv show would be kind of cool um you know people were saying iron fist or uh luke cage uh, would be another good option. Uh, Ghost Rider would be pretty cool, I would think. Um, but I, I really want to see if Netflix pulls out any other Marvel shows, um, and you know, make some maybe crossover or something. There's not much that leads me to believe that this Marvel series is within the uh, cinematic universe or anything like that. Kind of like how Agents of Shield is. But if it's, you know, its own kind of TV universe, I'd love to see some of these other characters that we're seeing on screen kind of get their own shows and, um, you know, kind of get that um, DC kind of feel. But with Marvel shows, you know, I, I've always said, you know, I've liked DC TV better. But, you know, with this, this is the best Marvel show I've seen so far. And sure, maybe I haven't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Agent Carter or um, some of the other, you know, live action uh, Marvel films that, or uh, not films, uh, TV shows that may be out right now. I, I don't even know what all of them are. But this is the best one that I've seen so far. And it's one of the best superhero shows that I've seen so far. And I really do hope that they continue um, making the show since I really do want to see more of the Daredevil costume. That, even though you see it in the last episode, it is done justice. And. <laughs> One of the jokes, which I'll say, is um, the guy that creates the suit, he's like, all the black parts will stop bullets. The red parts may be able to uh, stop a knife at the right angle. And you look at the suit, and it's almost all red. So um, I feel like that was a line that they kind of could have taken out to make it feel a little more badass. But um, it, it really is a cool suit. I'd love to see season two and see... Just the full suit in action, even though we saw it for a little bit, I want to see more of that suit. I want to know um, more about, you know, Foggy and Karen and Murdoch and, you know, whoever the next villain is. Um, whether it's Bullseye, whether it's, you know, the Red Hand or whatever uh, I'm messing up there. I, I really want to see it and I really want to know what happens next in this um, series. So thank you guys for watching. Um, what's your thoughts on Daredevil? Have you seen it? Does this make you want to see it? Um, make sure you leave it down in the comments below. And like I've said, uh, like, favorite, uh, subscribe if you want more of this. Um, or you could subscribe to the playlist. And every time that I update it, uh, it will move to the top of your playlist list. And then you can just watch it from there. If you just want to 
watch the uh, 50s thoughts instead of everything else that I put out. But I do put out a lot of other uh, cool t content for you guys to watch. Um, so thank you guys so much. And uh, as always, don't commit sins.